With that, I want to go ahead and get started and start talking about College Credit Plus. And this is actually a presentation put together by the state of Ohio, and you're going to find that it answers most of your questions about the program. So what is College Credit Plus? Well, College Credit Plus is Ohio's dual credit program, and that means the students actually earn high school and college credit at the same time. And they do that by enrolling in college courses, but in order to enroll in the college courses, they have to adhere to the requirements of whatever college or university they're going to be taking courses with. It does apply to students in grades 7 through 12. In order to participate, students have to complete an assessment exam and be, term, be determined eligible for the College Credit Plus program. We'll talk a little bit more in detail about that. Students may apply to any public college or any participating private college may apply to multiple institutions. So you're going to hear from Kent State tonight, you're going to hear from Eastern Gateway tonight and YSU, and technically you could apply to each and every one of those institutions. But you must be an Ohio resident. Students can choose from a variety of college level courses as determined by their placement testing and then the course eligibility rules. They can earn credit to satisfy both high school and college requirements. So when students take a college course through College Credit Plus, they're also meeting their high school requirements, and that's why it's called a dual credit program. So one three credit hour course at a college or university is equivalent to one credit at the high school. But students must successfully complete the courses in order to earn the credit. Students may take classes during summer, fall, and spring semesters. One word of caution, and I, I don't want to speak for my peers. I have a feeling they will likely agree with me. I would caution students thinking about summer courses. Summer courses are very, very short. And if you've never taken a college course, and if this is your first time taking a college course, summer can really be a rude introduction to a college uh, experience because you're taking a 15 credit or a 15 week course and you're condensing it into eight weeks or five weeks, which means you're doubling or tripling the workload. So my recommendation, I won't speak for my, my peers here at YSU or Eastern Gateway, my recommendation, however, would be if this is gonna be the first time you've taken a course to start with a fall or spring class, if you're a returning student, and you feel like you've got the rigors of College Credit Plus figured out, and you feel pretty comfortable with the whole program, then maybe we can start to consider a summer course. You can take courses at the high school, at the college campus, or online. Now, to take courses at the high school, that would require that your local high school has an agreement with one of the local colleges or universities. And I think each of the institutions here tonight have agreements with the schools that are represented here. So if you're at Wellsville, Beaver Local, or Southern, there are options for you to take courses at your local campus from one of our institutions. So how can students participate? Well, step one, eligibility. So students have to be eligible to participate in the College Credit Plus program, and that's based on assessment exam scores. So students have to show that they are ready to, uh, to work at a college level, and they do that by placing with an exam such as the ACT, the SAT, the ACCUPLACE or Alex Place You, or MapleSoft. And then each college or university may have different exam requirements. However, we will all use the ones that are listed here. Colleges and universities will review student scores using the statewide standards, which means they are actually set by the state of Ohio. If a student's scores are not college level, other conditions can be considered depending on the exam scores. If the student has an overall high school GPA of at least 3.0, so for each of those tests I listed, the ACT, the ACCUPLACER, the SAT, the state has set a minimum criteria for a passing score. But they've also set something called a conditional range. So if you haven't quite met the passing score, but you're within a couple points, you may be in that conditional eligibility range if you have that 3.0 GPA um, on your high school transcript. There's some conditions that go with that, but that's, that is one way that a student can participate. There's also an option for your local school to provide a recommendation form letter from the school counselor, principal, or career technical advisor. 
and that would be up to each local district to determine if they're going to use that method for eligibility. How can students participate? So step two would be the college admission process. So students have to apply for admission. So if you want to attend Kent State or you want to attend YSU or Eastern Gateway, you have to apply to attend at each of our schools. And we're just going to take a little bit of time to see me to tell you how that process works. Okay? You can contact the college to learn about the requirements, the process, paperwork. We'll talk about that a little bit more. But bear in mind, colleges have the final decision on the student admission. And then there's course registration. So if the student is considered eligible and has been admitted to the college, then the college will discuss the course options with the student based on their assessment scores, prerequisites, and other requirements. And then this, of course, leads to the question, what courses can a student take? Well, CCP courses can satisfy high school graduation requirements, and since they are going to meet high school graduation requirements, we're obviously going to recommend that you work with your school counselor to understand what those requirements are and how the CCP classes might help you meet those. Some high schools know do have more requirements for graduation than the state minimum, and your counselor can talk to you about that. And then what will happen is you'll meet with a college advisor like myself or Sarah, and then um, we'll look at your assessment scores, we'll talk about course prerequisites, and then we'll help you choose your courses. Course eligibility rules. So the state of Ohio has determined that students have to complete their first 15 credits in something they call a level one course. And these include transferable courses, courses in IT, computer science, anatomy and physiology, foreign language, courses that are part of a technical certificate, courses that are part of a 15 or 30 credit pathway, or courses in study skills, academic or career success. And one of the things we will do is often encourage students to take courses out of what's called the Ohio Transfer Module, which is a an almost surefire way to make sure your classes are going to transfer amongst the peer public institutions. Now, if you're going to go to a private school or an out-of-state school, they're always going to have the last say on how your credits are going to transfer. But that is a really safe bet if you're going to stay within the state of Ohio school. Colleges are required to post their level one courses. And once a student completes their first 15 credit hours in level one, he or she can move to level court, level two courses, which are just any allowable college course for which a student meets a prerequisite. <laughs> you don't have, we're not going to quiz you on all this. That's why you have an advisor who's going to be working with you as a student to help you along the way. Now, there are some non-allowable courses, and that would include private applied courses with one-on-one -on -one instruction, such as music lessons. Those would not be permitted in the College Credit Plus program. Courses with a high fee. So, for instance, students who want to go to our Kent campus and do flight would not be permitted to do that with College Credit Plus because of the high fees. Study abroad courses, physical education courses, pass or fail graded courses are not permitted. And then remedial courses or religious courses would not be permitted. And I'll give you an example of that. If somebody comes and they want to take a math class with us here at Kent State and they take our test to determine if they're eligible, if they place into what's called a remedial level, remedial math, which means they're not quite at the college level, they're really kind of more at a high school level, College Credit Plus is not going to pay for that class. At that point, we say, you're better off staying in high school to take, take your math. So what about grades? College Credit Plus grades earned in the college course is the same grade that goes on the high school transcript. So if you earn an A in the college course, you get an A in your high school transcript, and that would pertain to any grade. CCP course grades will be factored in the high school and college GPAs. So that's something you need to consider, because the rigors of a college course are going to be higher than what you're probably taking in a high school course, and that can impact your high school GPA. It's also going to be starting your permanent record as a college student with a college transcript. What about grade weighting? So if you're in a high school that uses weighted graded scale for advanced placement, international baccalaureate, or honors courses in a subject area, then college credit plus courses in the subject area will be weighted using the same scale. So college credit plus has to be treated like all the other um, weighted grades. Students may take college credit plus courses in subject areas that will satisfy graduation requirements, like English, like math, like science, like social studies. 
Students must work with their school counselors to ensure they're meeting any mandatory testing or other high school graduation requirements. Graduation requirements, I think that's really key. So how many classes can students take? Students may be enrolled in up to 30 semester credit hours per year, but that has to include high school courses. So in other words, you can't come to a college or university and take a full-time schedule and then go back to your high school and take a full-time schedule because that's gonna to be too much. So what the state has done is they've created this, this way for us to factor how many credits you're taking. So you have 30 credits total per year. And what we do is for every one credit you take at the high school, it's multiplied by three. So if you're taking five credits at the high school, that's 15 credits of your 30 for the year. And that has to be factored in. The maximum number of credits allowable over the life of the program is 120 credits. So if a student enrolls in more than 30 credit hours for the year, the school will then discuss with the student whether to drop the course because they've gone over their allowable amount, or the student would pay for the entire course, including tuition, fees, books, and they're not doing that at the College Credit Plus rate, they actually have to pay at the standard college tuition price. Tests. So. What are the differences between high school and college courses? So how do we start to frame this in, in a way you can make a good decision as to whether or not this is a good idea for, for you as a student or for your child as a parent thinking about this? Well, one thing that's different is testing. So at the high school level, tests are sometimes given weekly or maybe at the end of the chapter more regularly. At the college level, tests are generally, generally fewer in number, but they tend to cover more material. So for instance, if you're in a psychology class that goes the course of a semester, you may only have three tests and a final, which can be pretty stressful if you're used to having a lot of grades, a lot of homework, and a lot of tests, and a lot of ways of evaluating your progress. Because if you don't do really well in that first quiz or that test, it can have a greater impact on your, on your overall grade. What about study time? So in high school, required homework ranges between one to three per hours per day. College is a standard rule of two to three hours of homework for every hour spent in class. So that's typically three to five hours per day. Knowledge acquisition. In high school, information is usually provided in the classroom. Out of class research is minimal because of the amount of time you are spending in the class and with teachers. The college has kind of flipped around. So coursework is generally going to require more independent thinking longer writing assignments, and more out-of-class research. There's more independent study, more burden on the student to be learning on their own outside of the classroom. Grades. High school, you have numerous quizzes, tests, homework assignments. In college, few tests and fewer, if any, homework assignments will be used to determine final grades. And then what about the role of parents in the College Credit Plus program? Well, in high school, Parents are strong advocates working closely with their teachers, their students, teachers, and counselors. College is a little different. Parents serve as the mentor and they support the student, but the college is going to view the student as the independent decision maker and not the parent. And here's a little for instance. If your student participates in the College Credit Plus program, the university professors or college professors aren't going to know they're College Credit Plus students. It's not as though an asterisk is put next to their name that says, take it a little more easy on this student because they're still in high school. You're going to be treated just like any other traditional college student, and that's something to consider. And then in college, we do have something called the Family Education Rights and Privacy Act, something called FERPA that protects the student education records. So what are the benefits of participating in the College Credit Plus program? Well, if students do the College Credit Plus program, you get to earn high school and college credits at the same time. You get a head start on college degrees or certificates. Experience college early to understand the expectations of college life. And then probably what most parents are here for, save tuition and lots of money. Because as we know, college is expensive and the College Credit Plus program is free to the student if you're participating in a public college or university. It is free to the student unless that student withdraws from the class or does not pass the class. 
If a student does fail or withdraw too late from college courses, the district may require the student's family to repay the cost of tuition that the district has already paid. And the grades that students earn will be on the student's college transcript permanently. These are two risks associated with College Credit Plus. So bear in mind that whatever grade that student gets as a College Credit Plus student will go on a permanent college transcript, but it's also going to go on their high school transcript as well. If a student, I think we already read that one. So there are some rules for students who are underperforming. And College Credit Plus has something called probation. And a student's placed on CCP probation if he or she learns less than a cumulative 2.0 GPA, which would be a C average, in CCP courses or withdraws from two or more courses in one academic term. While on probation, the student may only enroll in one College Credit Plus course for the college term. And they may not enroll in the college course in the same subject in which the student previously earned a D, F, or NC grade or equivalent. And then if a student is on probation and they do not increase their GPA to 2.0 or above during that probation term, they will be placed on CCP dismissal. And while on dismissal, students may not enroll in any College Credit Plus courses. At the end of the dismissal term, the student can request or appeal to be reinstated into the program. And as to these appeals for probation, a student may appeal in order to take a course in the same subject in which he or she previously earned a DF or received no credit. And for dismissal within five days of being dismissed, the student may submit an appeal to the secondary school to appeal CCP dismissal. And I don't know about your institutions, but uh, like for instance at Kent State, if a student is dismissed, they're notified by via email. And so if you're not checking your email on a regular basis, those five days can become problematic if you're checking those once every seven. <laughs> so um, there, there's more of a burden of responsibility on the student if they are participating in the College Credit Plus program. So what are the expenses for College Credit Plus? Well, public colleges and universities like those you're going to hear from this evening, there will be no cost to you, the student, or the family for tuition, for required fees, or for books. In private colleges or universities, students may be charged a small cost per credit hour. And then some optional expenses are the responsibility of the student, for example, parking and transportation. So the colleges and universities are not going to pay to get your student here if they're taking a course on campus. Um, and some colleges and universities will actually perhaps have a parking fee that you may have to pay, but you will not be paying for tuition or for books or for those associated course fees. What are the support services available for students? So high school counselors will continue to provide assistance to all the College Credit Plus students, and then your student will be assigned a college advisor who will be providing similar assistance here at the college level, especially as it relates to um, selecting courses and uh, academic support as well. Colleges must provide the same academic supports to College Credit Plus students as they do our other students. So College Credit Plus students have access to all the same things that our traditional students have access to. What about athletic eligibility? So student athletes should confirm their schools in Ohio High School Athletic Association member, learn the OHSAA requirements, and then know that the summer term CCP courses cannot be used to bring a student in compliance with the OHSAA requirements for interscholastic athletic participation. Will the course credit transfer? So typically, yes. In my experience, the courses that students should be taking with us are courses that are likely to transfer to another institution. As I said before, unless they're going to a private school or to a school out of state, then they are going to reserve the right as to how those courses transfer. But in my experience, most of those schools do still work with students who have credit, and they do transfer. So what does being college ready mean? Because remember, all students have to demonstrate that they are college ready to participate in the program. So being college ready is more than just being academically ready. Consider the emotional and social transition and college expectations. So I personally would say that this is about 
of, of the decision you should be thinking about making that decision making process. If your student qualifies academically to participate in the program, it's not a question of whether or not they can do the work because they're academically ready to do the work. But where we've seen some students struggle is perhaps they're not mature enough to be doing that independent study, that independent work on their own. And that lack of maturity can sometimes translate to poor performance in a class. Because if you have a student coming to the campus for a class, they may only be coming two days a week. And they're coming to a new school, a new location where there may not be somebody taking tabs on them. And it wouldn't be the first time we've had a phone call where somebody says, hey, has so-and-so been coming down to your campus for class? And frankly, I don't know. But then when we invest investigate, maybe ask some questions, we find that perhaps they weren't. That's a part of social maturity and making good decisions. So I would say that that is the biggest part of being a successful College Credit Plus student. You have to consider time management, organizational skills. Grades earned in a CCP course are for high school and college credits and are going to be calculated into the student's GPA at both places. We talked about that. And then College Credit Plus credits will be utilized in the calculation of financial aid after high school. So if a student withdraws from a lot of classes as a College Credit Plus student, not only can that put them on probation, but later on, it can have some ramifications on their, their financial aid. I personally don't know of any students that's had a negative impact on their financial aid from taking College Credit Plus, but depending on your performance, it, it could pose a risk. So what are the deadlines? April 1st of 2020, students must complete and return the intent to participate form to the school office, and that'll go back to your college or uh, high school counselors. And then what you're going to want to do is check the ACT and SAT testing dates um, because, for instance, I think YSU has some deadlines as to which test you would need to take to be eligible for their program. And then you need to check each college's deadline for admission. We're going to talk to you about those in just a minute. Find out about each college assessment requirement. And then the summer semester deadline, keep in mind, will be earlier um, than the fall semester deadline because classes typically start in May. And so before I uh, turn it over to my peers here, this presentation will be uh, recorded. And so your counselors will have a link to this. So if you have any other questions or if you have something I went over quickly that you'd like to look at again, uh, you can watch this online and then there will be a presentation link so you can follow along with the slide as well. But if you are a student who's interested in participating at Kent State East Liverpool, our summer application deadline is April 1st, and then our fall application deadline is May 1st. And we have some handouts that go over all of this that are table out in the hall, and we'd be happy to give those to you this evening. We also do require a permission form that the student is required to sign, and then the parent or guardian is required to sign as well. Our application is actually done online, and we go out and visit Wellsville, Beaver Local and Southern Local, and will help your student do the application um, online there in the school. Uh, one of the things I would encourage you to do is if you're interested in multiple schools, but you're not sure where you're going to attend, go through that application process, because if you go through the process and change your mind, that's okay. But if you change your mind and you didn't go through the application process, it's going to be too late. And so it's better to err on the side of caution and go ahead and go through that process and then change your mind later than vice versa. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Sarah Fletcher. She's going to talk to you about Eastern Gateway. Hello. I'm not going to go into everything he just went over because it's very redundant. But I just wanted to just go over a couple of our deadlines with you, and this stuff will be out there on the table as well. And you can find this on our on our website. If you go to egcc.edu, College Credit Plus is right at the top of the web page there. And actually, all of the information tonight will be on that web page as well. But our, our summer deadline is May 1st, as well as our, our fall deadline. Um, and then for spring 2021, because we're talking about next year, um, is November 1st. So I know that, that Donald Bean had stressed, even if you don't go through the application process, to at least make sure that you get that done. You know, unfortunately, we've had a couple of students 
more recently, this week and last week, calling wanting to spread courses, and one thing they never did was apply to the college, so they missed those deadlines. So that's one of the things that you want to make sure you're airing on that caution. Okay, so I'll be out there afterwards if anybody has any questions, and we have handbooks to give out. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. My name is Carla Crodel. I'm from Youngstown State University. And our deadlines are a little bit earlier than the other schools. We've got a really big program and not a whole lot of staff. So we have a lot of paperwork that we have to crank, grind through during the summer. Um, if you want a summer class, our deadline is March 13th. But I do agree uh, with Donald that taking summer classes is really a drag. It's, it's very intense, and I would not recommend it. Um, for fall and spring classes, both. We have one application deadline of April 7th. So if you're thinking, well, I don't want to take a class till January, April 7th. We've got a great brochure out there that you can grab in the beginning of it. It talks about the, the eligibility and placement. The last two pages give you the steps you have to take in order to get into CCP. And it's not too different from the other schools. We do have admission criteria at YSU. You have to have a 17 ACT and a 2.0 GPA. So you have to meet that admission requirement. The second step is uh, is looking at your ACT testing dates and making sure that you get those in. And so all the dates that, that are the deadlines for us are in there. And so then you apply. And then what happens? We send you a letter. We send you a physical letter. And that letter tells you how to activate your YSU account. Because of FERPA, we can't talk to just anybody about a student's <laughs> progress. So we, we communicate with you through your YSU email account only, only. This is something that I, I will call a fatal flaw. We admit students. They're ready to go. They've got scores, but maybe they needed to do placement testing. We send them emails. We send them emails. We send them emails. Have them come in, and they're not checking their email. They never see it. They don't do the placement testing. They can't take the course. It's a fatal flaw. You've got to do that stuff. Save. Get a little box, a little folder, put all this stuff in it. You know, keep it all together. Um, once you've been accepted, um, you'll you'll do an online orientation. If you're planning to come to campus for classes, we'll set you up with an advisor for like a half day session of registration. Again, but your ability to organize yourself, get a planner that takes you out through next spring, because our our calendars are different than the high school calendars if you're coming onto our campuses. So get yourself really organized, get that all planned out. We never have snow days, do we? <laughs> never. Yeah. So I'll be out at the table if anybody has any questions. Thanks. Thank you all for coming this evening. Please remember to go see your uh, high school counselors at their table, and then we'll be out there in the hallways to answer questions as well.